Okay, in today's video, I'm going to go over a problem where we're going to determine the acceleration of an object that's moving down an inclined plane, and there's friction between the object and the inclined plane. And this is the question we're going to answer. We have a 7.5 kilogram object. It's accelerating down a 19 degree inclined plane. There's a coefficient of friction between the object and the surface of the inclined plane of 0 0.25, and we want to know what is the acceleration of that object. So I like to draw a nice quick diagram I have right here, drew an inclined plane, put my angle in, this is 19 degrees, this is the inclined plane, 19 degrees above the horizontal, there's the object, and I put down here that there's a coefficient of friction between the object and the inclined plane of 0 0.25. Okay, now the next thing I like to do is draw in my x-axis, which is parallel to my inclined plane, and my y-axis, which is perpendicular to that, just like that. Now I know the object is going to be moving down the inclined plane to the left, so I made this x and I made that positive. It's going to have a positive acceleration down the inclined plane to the left. All right. Now we're going to use Newton's second law, F equals ma. The object is accelerating in the x direction, so I have some of the forces in the x direction is equal to the mass times the acceleration in the x direction, and I'm going to solve that for the acceleration in the x direction. Some of the forces in the x direction is equal to, no, excuse me, the acceleration in the x direction is equal to the sum of the forces in the x direction divided by the mass. Now we know the mass, but we don't know the forces in the x direction. So we have to figure out which forces are acting in the x direction. And to do that, I'm gonna draw in, simply draw in all the forces that are acting on the object we're on Earth. So that first force we always like to draw in is the force of gravity, I label that mg, because we calculate that as the mass of the object times the acceleration due to gravity, 9.8 meters per second squared. The next force we can draw in is the normal force. That's the force that's keeping the object from falling through the inclined plane, so to speak. And since we have friction, we're always gonna draw in friction. The object is moving to the left. Friction opposes motion. So therefore we draw the friction in the opposite direction, okay? So those are the three forces. Now when I draw them, I don't worry so much about drawing them to scale. I simply draw them in mostly for the direction in which they are acting. All right, there you go. So those are the three forces that we have acting on this object. Now the object is accelerating down and to the left, but there's no force actually causing it to accelerate down and to the left. So where is that force? Where does that force come from? Well, that force comes from the X component of the weight. The weight force is not acting in the Y direction, and it's not acting in the x direction, so it has some component of that is in the y and some component is in the x. And we're going to break this vector into its x and y components, and we'll get the x component, and that'll be the force that's causing the object to accelerate down the inclined plane. The y component we draw along the y-axis, opposite the normal force, because they're equal and opposite, equal in magnitude and opposite in direction. And then the x component we draw parallel to the x-axis. And you can see here we have a right triangle, this force being parallel to the x-axis. We have a right triangle. We know this angle is 19 degrees. This is a similar triangle, so we also know that this angle is 19 degrees, and now we can use our trig functions to solve for the x and the y components of the weight force. The y component. This side is opposite, excuse me, this side is adjacent to this angle. For the adjacent, we use the cosine because the cosine is the adjacent over the hypotenuse. So we know that mgy, if we solve for mgy, mgy is the hypotenuse times the angle or the cosine of the angle, the hypotenuse being mg cosine theta. So mgy is simply the mass times the acceleration due to gravity times the cosine of the angle. Now this side, mgx, is opposite this angle, and for the opposite we use the sine, because the sine is the opposite over the hypotenuse, so the x component of the weight force is simply mg sine theta. Okay, now this, as we said, you can see is acting parallel to the x-axis, acts along the x-axis. This is the force that causes the object to accelerate down the inclined plane and like, just move it up there, draw it up there, so I can see I have actually two forces now acting in the x direction. I have MGX and I have the friction force. So there's some force pulling it down, there's some force opposing that from friction, and the sum of those two forces is gonna be the sum of the forces in the X direction. So we have over here, some of the forces in the X direction, it's gonna be MGX minus the friction force. But first, we already know what MGX is, it's MG sine theta, because we know M, we know G, and we know the sine, the angle is 19 degrees. But we don't know the friction force. 
Well, the equation for the friction force, the friction force is equal to mu times the normal force. Well, what's the normal force? The normal force, as we said earlier, is equal and opposite of the y component of the weight. So the y component of the weight and the normal force are acting in opposite directions, but they have the same magnitude because the object is not accelerating in the y direction. So then we can simply write down here that the friction force is mu times Fn, the normal force, and the normal force is mgy, which mgy is mg cosine theta. All right, now we can simply plug our values in. The acceleration of the object is the sum of the two forces. Now, we said this is x in the positive direction, so I'm going to put down mg sine theta, because that's mgx is mg sine theta. The friction force it acts in the opposite direction. The friction force is mu mg cosine theta. So I'm going to put negative or minus, because that's subtracting the force. Okay, and then we put down the mass. You can see I have a mass here, a mass here, and a mass here. So I can factor out those masses and cancel them. So those masses cancel, and then I can factor out a g. So I get that the acceleration of the object is g times the sine of theta minus mu times the cosine of theta. And you can see, once again, just like in the previous problem, the mass is not included in the acceleration. So the mass of the object actually does not affect the acceleration of the object. Okay? So now we can plug our values in. G 9.8, sine of 19, minus mu times the cosine of 19. And you get that the acceleration of the object is 0 0.87 meters per second squared. All right? So there you go. That is how you determine the acceleration of an object that's moving down an inclined plane with friction. Okay, thank you very much for watching. I hope you found that helpful. If you did, please leave me a thumbs up or a nice comment in the comment section, and we'll see you in the next video.